The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us pause to call to mind our sins. Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David said of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, 
nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. Responsorial Psalm Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart extols me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, Conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. 
Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and they did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him on, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them by the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the most beautiful of the resurrection accounts. And I think the line that sticks with me most, that really stays with me is, did not our hearts burn within us? What a gift that is to feel the presence of God, to feel the presence of Christ so deeply that our hearts begin to feel warm. They begin to feel as if a fire is within us. And that is a fire of the spirit, the spirit that is promised to us, uh, both in Pentecost, but then also throughout our lives, the spirit that we embrace when we uh, receive baptism. These disciples, we understand them. We understand how the world can chill our hearts so much, how the events around us, how everything that is pressing upon us can dampen our spirits. But as we contemplate on the great mystery that Christ has given us, the fact that the Word of God, the Word who existed before all ages, became incarnate for us, to accompany us, to walk with us throughout the journey of life, very much as he walked with these disciples on the journey from one city to another. This same Christ, this same God, wants to be part of us, wants to stay with us. When they say, to Jesus, stay with us, Jesus accepts the invitation. Likewise, when we open our hearts and we say, stay with us, Christ will always enter into our hearts. Now, as quickly as he was with them, there's a moment where he breaks the bread for them and he vanishes. So the moments of Christ's presence in our lives sometimes can be fleeting. It does not mean that they're not real. It does not mean they will not endure. It does not mean that they are over. It just means that for this moment, Christ is truly with us. He gives us the sacrament and what opens their hearts is the burning within them of the Eucharist, of the presence of Christ. If we find that we are distant from Christ, we can open our hearts and we can pray. Jesus gives us his abiding presence in the Eucharist and his abiding presence in the Spirit. May we take this promise and may we allow Jesus to journey with us every step of the way. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's infinite mercy, let us bring our petitions before him. For missionaries, may the Lord bless them with generosity and boldness in sharing the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the heads of government throughout the world, may God's gracious mercy be upon them and those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are troubled in spirit, may they receive hope and healing through the grace of God and the efforts of their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, May the Lord bless our relationships and grant us purity of heart and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the light of faith, may they share in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For all special petitions brought before the altar. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we who believe in you without seeing, give you thanks for your gracious mercy. Hear the prayers we offer today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into the Passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. With longing for the coming of God's 
kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, look upon your church with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. For myself, for Monsignor Aquino, for Father Drantz, and for all who serve at St. Malachy's, for all who have worshiped with us over this year, as we gather together now in the joy of the Easter season, may God's abundant blessings be with you and those whom you love. We continue to remember in our hearts those whom we have lost, praying for God's mercy. We pray for those who suffer at this time, that they may know God's strength. But we pray for all of you, 
that united with us in prayer, you may know God's peace and the joy of the resurrection of the world that you go into. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and your loved ones forever and ever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.